All right, so we've been covering the retail apocalypse for about two years now, and also the pension crisis. I like these economic videos. They're always really interesting for me to do, and people are always really interested in hearing them. So we're going to continue on this path today with what they're calling the trucker bloodbath or the trucking apocalypse. Now, over the past six, eight months, there has been seven companies with decent size who have closed down in the trucking industry, all right? And this is something that nobody's talking about, nobody has any idea about, but it is a lagging indicator of the retail apocalypse. So when all these companies started going under with you know Sears and Toys R Us and all these other companies, the problem is, is that the people who move their freight also are gonna go under. So I'm gonna give you a list of all the things going on in the trucking industry right now, and I'm gonna show you where we are as far as things are concerned and i want you to understand what the situation is so first off let's go with new england motor freight right i recently actually didn't even hear about this happening and there's a terminal right down the street from where i live at um they had their you know i mean the 19th largest uh, trucking company in the u.s uh it's the largest trucking company to close since uh, the number two trucking company closed back in 2002 uh, it's laying off 1,500 drivers, had 1,800 trucks, and operated 5,600 trailers. It closed February of 2019. Um, LME, Lakeview Motor Express, 600 drivers were laid off in a day. The company just shuttered its doors. It closed down all their fuel cards. Nobody was able to get home, and nobody had any idea what to do. They didn't give them any warning, and there was nothing told to anyone about anything. Falcon Transport of Ohio, 600 drivers were left stranded again. Every, there was no paychecks, no way to get anywhere. Guys were literally sitting in terminals in a different side of the country from where they lived. And they were literally asking for handouts, begging for people to give them fucking food. That's really where things are. Um, Atkinson Trucking. 40 drivers and 20 owner ops closed down. Uh, Starlight Trucking just closed down yesterday. Again, no warning, no one was told anything. New Penn is closing its headquarters and laying off 80 employees in Lebanon, Pennsylvania. Uh, it's workers and drivers, and it's talking about closing down two terminals in the Midwest. Um, it's actually ran by my former boss. He came from uh, Burlington Air Express in Shanker. He's gonna be consolidating things. Um, Shanker came in and bought Burlington Air Express, who was moving a lot of Amazon's freight earlier on like 2008, 2009. Uh, and these guys here ended up getting bought by Chanker, who's a large European shipper, and they wanted their international freight. And they basically burned the domestic part to the ground. Uh, this guy's a, one of them corporate war hawks. He's going to end up closing stuff down. Alahan, uh, ALA, Indiana-based company, uh, uh, laid off 41 drivers. And Penske Logistics in Fort Wayne, Indiana, said that they're going to be uh, laying off 80 workers and will be closing uh, July 20th. So that's another 80 drivers light off. Williams Trucker, Williams Trucking out of Alabama is a uh, flatbed company. Uh, is laying off 48 drivers. Actually laid off 48 drivers, I think back in May. No warning, nobody had any idea what's going on. Uh, intermodal shipments are down 7%. Freight revenue per tractor is down 5% and the miles are down 11% on average. Shares of Covenant Transport are down 40%, JB Hunt's down 9%, and Swift Knight is down 5%. So, trucking is not doing as well as what everybody thinks it is. I had somebody on a live stream the other day when I was in there with Tonkin, she told me, oh, 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 trucking never done. Man, listen, all right? Trucking goes through a lot of ups and downs, and there's years where being a trucker is not the best life in the world. All right? it, it gets tough, and it gets hard, and... They're having a major driver shortage, so that means they had to up their pay of the drivers because people don't want to do it. They had individuals driving cross country um, in 2008, 2009 for like six and seven dollars an hour. And really, if you took it really out, like how long you're actually in the truck, their guys were making like two dollars and fifty cents an hour. It, it was terrible. Believe it or not, when I first started driving, I made seven twenty-five an hour, and that was in 2013. <laughs> like, yo, these are things that they do not tell you about. You know, I mean, that you think, oh man, truckers earn all this fucking money. It's ridiculous. Like, yeah, once you're in the industry a little bit, you can earn money depending on where you live. There's a lot of places where 
you don't earn as much as what you think you do. But recently, in order to attract drivers are having to raise pay. They tried bringing in automatic trucks so they so women would come in and they're not women aren't interested in being a trucker. And I mean like yo, like it's kinda like being a garbage man. Women don't want to be garbage men either. Alright, no one wants to spend their whole life driving a truck down a fucking road, eating at fucking restaurants. And I mean, spending your whole paycheck to survive and not having any home life or family time or any free time or any type of actual friends at home because all you do is fucking work. Like nobody is no female in the world is interested in that fucking deal. That is a shitty deal for anybody involved. Um, So with that being said, and I mean, that's something that, you know, I really think that we should have a conversation about. And I mean, but not only that. But it's something we should be well aware of about what's going on. This is why they're trying to bring in these uh, automated trucks is because of the fact that they know that people won't do the job. And in they've tried a couple ways of solving this. They tried puppy milling out uh, drivers and they ended up um, having massive amounts of problems where drivers wrecked all over the place. When I say puppy milling out, what they did was they just basically started pumping people through schools and not actually giving them any real training not teaching anybody anything you know they'll go oh man we'll just put them out with a trainer and they'll learn on the road and it so many wrecks happened with swift that it actually affected (laughs) their stock price so that didn't work and you know i mean fmcsa started cracking down on you know i mean all these drivers who didn't have any hours behind the wheel in schools and so that didn't work and they're having to offer more money but it's still not enough really to get the job done it's really not and there's no guarantee on miles. Like I'm home right now. Like I should be on the road working, but I'm not because there's no work. This is something that, you know I mean? They don't tell you about. These are things that happen a lot. And I'm with one of the largest companies in the world when it really comes down to it. And, you know, there's just not a lot of freight out there. And it's extremely, extremely cutthroat. Companies like Swift will cut their nose off to spite their face and bid like Mexicans. You know, I mean, they'll do the job for a quarter of what it actually costs to get the job done. And these smaller companies or companies that aren't massively capitalized do not have the ability to just continue to operate at a loss constantly while having an increase in insurance prices and keeping their drivers trained up and maintaining equipment and maintaining terminals and all the things that go with, and I mean, the overhead of operating logistics in a trucking company like this is a major problem and then you add into the retail apocalypse where we have all these stores that are closing down and amazon's getting to be one of the only you know i mean real ways of having freight move on a regular consistent basis and you know everybody's begging amazon for freight instead of you know i mean having amazon beg them to take their freight this is some real shit and then you add into that there's a massive demographic problem that's happening right now People are going into retirement with not enough money saved. This is something that no one's talking about. To be a fact, check out this clip. It's the household net worth, the average net worth of the American household. And it looks pretty good, right? They got 24,000 in bonds. Americans don't seem to like bonds and that's something I'll talk about in a bit. They've got $269,000 of equities, 300,000 real estate, savings of 107,000, pension fund assets of 264,000 and other savings and assets of about 120,000. Now that's a pretty healthy million dollar balance sheet. So what's the problem? The problem is it's massively skewed by the 1%. That 1% that we hear about versus the 99, well, they've got all the assets and all the savings. When you strip out the data for the 1% and calculate the median net worth, it's an entirely different game. The median net worth offers something that I think is terrifying and sad. The average person has $4,000 in their bonds. They have $45,000 in equities, $53,000 in real estate, which, I mean, it's extraordinary, right? That is all they have after their mortgage is $53,000 for a lifetime worth of household investment. They have savings of $18,000, pension fund assets of $44,000, and other assets of 20,000. So with the waves and waves and waves of baby boomers retiring right now, right, who were basically what really drove the US economic engine, these individuals are finding out that they don't really have enough money to get by. 
and the younger generation are tied down with massive amounts of debt from colleges or even just basic life and the cost of living has gone up to the point of where nobody can really get by and we haven't had a wage increase since 1978 well you know that kind of spells doom for our fucking economy in our country it's an econ it's a demographic and economic time bomb it is what it is and all these baby boomers are retiring this year and next year there's going to be massive amounts of individuals from now until 2025 who are going to be retiring and not spending as much fucking money so you're going to see the entire economic system kind of just slow down until they all start to die and then you're going to end up having an as a, a massive economic fucking problem where you're going to be selling to a shrinking market because people aren't having as many kids and you're going to have a smaller amount of individuals you're going to be selling to everybody goes you know demand is infinite it's really not infinite if you have people having less kids and your population is shrinking that's a whole different problem that we have never faced before. Our entire economic system is going to have to be revamped and rehauled. Socialism isn't going to work. Capitalism isn't going to work. Even the mix isn't really going to work. You don't have anybody to pay the bills later. So it's something that, you know, we're going to have to look at, figure out and see what the hell we're going to end up doing. Like it's going to be a whole new world we're walking into. But the reality is right now is we're going to start this very, very tough time over the next five, six years. It's We may end up in another fucking depression. It is what it is. Man, look, it's Tom Pease of Pinoy News. Y'all know the deal. If you like this video, man, hit the sub button. God damn it. You know what I'm saying? I'll put out more shit like this. Let me know the situation. Peace be like one. Later.